Hey, what's up, guys? You are welcome to Prime Reporters TV. This week is the Easter holiday week in Sweden, so everyone is at home. The kids are here, and that means that I will be talking from home today, as you can see. So please try also to bear with me, because you may hear the kids' voices now and then in the background, because they are just in the next room. So let's get started. With the coronavirus outbreak defying all measures countries have put and are putting in place to stem its spread, a lot of horrible stuff have happened in these past few days. So this week, we will be looking at some of the hottest and most controversial topics. But before we do that, here are some highlights. YouTube has banned all conspiracy theory videos falsely linking coronavirus symptoms to 5G networks. The move follows a live-streamed interview with conspiracy theorist David Icke on Monday, in which he linked the technology to the pandemic. A discussion between two top French doctors on live TV last Wednesday, 1st of April, left viewers horrified when they proposed that Africa should become a giant laboratory for coronavirus vaccine testing because the continent lacks the resources to defend itself against the coronavirus. The Swedish news agency TT in a report this week has claimed that Sweden has been underreporting the coronavirus death due to some backlog. I'm Sunday Christopher Mwamusa and you are welcome back to Prime Reporters TV. While government agencies across the globe are working around the clock to prevent the coronavirus pandemic from spreading even further, they are also taxed with containing digital outbreak of misinformation. There have been some crackpot online conspiracy theories linking the 5G network to the new coronavirus outbreak. And while there is absolutely no evidence to support the idea that 5G technology contributes to the spread of the coronavirus. The conspiracy is being shared widely on social media. Brendan Carr, a United States Federal Communications Commissioner, described a 5G conspiracy theory tweet by someone with 4 million followers as straight from the most dangerous depth of tinfoil hat land. Many would have laughed at these scientifically unproven claims, but still, if you can recall in the third episode of The Power of Journalism, the link is up here. I said, in times of mass hysterias, the human mind goes on witch hunts for information that fits the narrative. And under this circumstance, people tend to believe any nonsense as long as it validates some notion they nourish. 5G burning. These online conspiracy theories had some dangerous real-world consequences last week when arsonists in the UK set ablaze 5G wireless towers in Birmingham, Liverpool and Merseyside and then uploaded the videos of the vandalism to social media despite scientists saying there is no connection between the technology and the spread of the COVID-19. Now, Hollywood actor Woody Harrison was among those stars who also shared the theory on his Instagram account last week, although it has been taken down. I have been reached tens of times in this past few days to fact check the veracity of some information concerning these conspiracy theories. I have also seen tens of videos and blogs supporting these conspiracies. I have even seen a video of a popular Nigerian pastor making some kumbaya analysis of how 5G is connected to some COVID-19 and some new world order. I have tried to make some findings which I will share with you. And these findings are based on scientific researches and interviews. Earlier this year, a long-running study from the Watchdog International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection ICNIRP rebooted these claims, saying there was no evidence that mobile networks cause cancer or other illnesses. Scientists explained that COVID-19 is a virus spread by person-to-person -person contact and not by radio waves. 
Now you can verify this. According to the International EMF Project, established by the World Health Organization in 1996, mobile phones and cell towers transmit radio signals at frequencies well below those of X-rays and ultraviolet light, which are strong enough to damage human cells and DNA, and they are categorized as ionizing radiation. But the lower bands encompassing everything from like AM radio to cell phones, microwaves, ovens, these are categorized as non-ionizing radiation and they don't harm DNA directly. But now, some of the ongoing theories claim 5G can suppress the immune system, thus making people to be susceptible to catching the virus. And some other says that it is an introduction, the Christians, it is an introduction to the new world order. But some also say that the virus, the coronavirus can somehow be transmitted through the use of the technology. Then the most laughable of all is when a pastor claimed that the 5G will be used to connect people's brain and control them the way devices are controlled. He said, he went further to say that people who did brain science would understand, but I didn't because I didn't do brain science. I didn't understand what he meant and he didn't make me understand either. But Dr. Simon Clark, an associate professor in cellular microbiology at the University of Reading said, these notions are complete rubbish. One of the videos that was sent to me was the video of a Nigerian popular pastor, Pastor Chris Oyahilume. And in that video, he was trying to explain the connection between 5G network and the new world order. He talked about the internet of things, how people are going to be connected together, and then people are going to be controlled, their brains are going to be connected. So now I watched it several times. I was trying to, to, to get what he was trying to say. So I thought he would use some irrefutable proof or findings or scientific findings, research, to buttress his assertions or what he was trying to say. But uh, that didn't happen. But rather, he told us that people who did brain science would understand what he was saying. Well, like I said, I didn't do brain science and I didn't understand what he was saying. So I felt it would have made me, but he didn't do that. He also talked about how scientists are lying. Digital ID with what? Vaccines. This they didn't tell you. He said that he went to some exposition sometime, some tech exposition, and he met some tech guy and he was asking him some questions, which he didn't tell us. And then the, the, the tech guy said, oh, sorry, I, didn't, I don't know all these things. Then he now asked the guy, then what are you doing here? And the guy said, oh, oh sorry, they just told me that I am just here. I'm a student. They just told me to be here. They just told me these things that I'm saying. Well, uh, I have been to a lot of expositions and uh, I'm not saying he's lying, but I just don't believe that because it is not, it is preposterous what he said. So you don't just bring a student and tell a student what to say in an exposition. Everything he said in that video, they are his own opinion and he has nothing, he has no proof apart from what he said. And I don't know how people will believe that. When several countries, including China, Italy, France, Spain, Iran, the US, and many more, began to experience a massive outbreak of the coronavirus, most countries in Africa had either reported zero or few cases. Then experts began to wonder why Africa seemed to have few cases. They wondered why one of the world's most vulnerable regions, Sub-Sahara Africa, has been so far spared. They began to think that Africa was either covering up cases or not detecting them. Many Africans began to baffle why these experts were not focusing on trying to stem the spread of the virus in countries like China and Italy and other European countries with a considerable amount of cases instead of wondering why the virus is not yet in Africa. Now there are more than 10,000 cases on the continent with infections in every country but one. That is Lesotho. A discussion between two top French doctors on live TV last Wednesday left viewers horrified when Jean-Paul Mira 
one of the French doctors raised the idea of testing new vaccines on African population. Mira is the head of the intensive care department at the Cochin Hospital in Paris, while Camille Lotch, the other doctor, is the research director at the French National Institute of Health and Medical Research, known as INSERM. ISEM is ranked as the world's second best research institutions in the health sector. If I can be provocative, Mira said, shouldn't we do this study in Africa where there are no masks, no treatment, no intensive care, a bit like what we did in some studies on AIDS? We tried things on prostitutes because they are highly exposed and do not protect themselves. You are right. We are actually thinking of a parallel study in Africa to use the same approach with BCG placebos. But Dr. Mira was wrong about Africa. The situation on ground isn't as he described it. He said that there are no masks, no treatment, no intensive care in Africa. But that is not the case. The doctor's remarks sparked outrage and storm of criticism and they were accused of treating Africans like human guinea pigs. Many Africans, including former footballer DJ Drogba, called the comments deeply racist. He added, do not take African people as human guinea pigs. Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus, the Director General of the World Health Organization, also condemned the comments and called it racist. Africa can't and won't be a testing ground for any vaccine, he said. But what exactly did this doctor say? Let's analyze what they said. Now, during the debate on the French TV channel, LCI, Camille Lodge, head of research at the same health research group, was talking about a vaccine trial in Europe and Australia. Then Mira then said, if I can be provocative, shouldn't we be doing this study in Africa? But note that Dr. Mira had earlier questioned whether the study would work as planned on healthcare workers in Australia and Europe. But the timing of such comments was wrong, as it fueled existing fears in Africa that African people will be used as guinea pigs for the new coronavirus vaccine. But the doctors insisted on Friday that they had been misunderstood and apologized for any offenses caused. So let me know what you think. You think they are lying. You think that was not the intention. Just let me know what you think. You can leave your comments in the comment section below. Now, moving on to Sweden, my own country. Now, if there's anything Sweden loves more than coffee, it's attention. Sweden loves attention. And right now, as you're watching this video, the country has gotten a lot of it. Sweden has not done what most Canadian provinces have. There are no states of emergency, and businesses have not been ordered to close to enforce social distancing and halt the spread of the infection. Now, it's no news that Sweden, according to a rep track rating, had in October 2019, for the second time in a role claimed the number one spot on the list of the world's most reputable countries. You know, that kind of rating that shows everything is okay in Sweden. That kind of rating that shows that everyone is happy. Everyone is doing well. Foreigners are happy. Foreigners are grateful. And the Swedes are acquiescent. You know, you always see a colored person, a veiled person in almost every group photo in Sweden. You know, like everything is good here. Everything is fine. So now as the entire world battles tooth and nail to curb the spread of the new coronavirus pandemic, Sweden has chosen its own path. While countries, including Sweden's neighbors, have shut down schools, restaurants, shops, borders, Sweden has maintained a sloppy or a wait-and-see approach to combating the spread of the virus. Decisions are still being taken at a snail's speed. Now, it wasn't until March 29 that the Swedish government significantly reduced the size of permitted gatherings from 500 to 50. But now, the government seeks extra coronavirus power to be able to act quickly. Like, how many of you remember this? Get 
attack on my command! Yes, Captain! That is if you feel like it. I mean, I don't have to decide everything all the time. You want to make a decision? Oh, maybe it's Ingrid's turn. Okay. Ingrid! Ingrid, do you want to attack? you want to attack? I think we should have a group discussion about this. That's a good idea! We should bring in Lasse! Yes! Lasse! Yes! You want to attack? Now, Sweden is yet to impose lockdown orders, as seen in other European countries. Instead, it recommends and calls on citizens to each take responsibility and follow the social distancing guidelines. Many still go to work in Sweden. Primary schools and daycares are still very much opened. Recreational centers and so many gyms still have their doors ajar. Many across the globe are asking, is Sweden immune to this virus? Or does Sweden know something the rest of the world doesn't? Around 2,300 academics have signed an open letter to the government at the end of last month calling for a more stringent measures to protect the healthcare system. It's going to take too long time and the problem is that this virus is spreading so fast, which means that there are too many people that get sick at the same time and then you collapse, uh, you collapse the hospital. But on Monday, the Stefan Levien led government proposed a bill to give it additional power that could see it limit public gatherings or close businesses without first getting approval of parliament. But that isn't the only big news this week in Sweden. The Swedish news agency TT has claimed that Sweden's coronavirus death rates are in fact higher than reported. But though inaccurate, the death toll in Sweden has risen over 400 last Sunday, which is a higher fatality rate per capita than in the United States or any other Scandinavia country. On March 26, a total number of 66 deaths were reported, but though they said there was a backlog, but that updated figure is now almost double at 124, according to TT. Now, an article on Fria Tide wrote, TT reveals only half of Sweden's corona death are shown in the statistics. Now, many are asking if Sweden is hiding uncomfortable truth from its people in a bid to cover its track. But Anders Tegner, the state epidemiologist, blamed the underreport on a backlog and said it's Definitely not that we try to hide something. Now, people want to know if Sweden is manipulating numbers to conceal the correct coronavirus death toll to justify their lax approach to the fight against the pandemic. Now, please let me know what you think. Do you think that Sweden is lying? Do you think Sweden is manipulating numbers? Or do you think that it is because of the backlog? Please let me know what you think in the comment section below. So that's all again for this week. Thank you very much for watching and I will try as much as I can to keep you updated as usual. But till then, let me know which of these three topics you would like to talk about or comment on. And if you like this video, make sure you click and like and comment and just let me know what you think. And don't also forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos as soon as they are published. So thank you very much and see you next week.